In today's show, we're going to look at all of the action from Sunday, all of the games, all of the news, all of the Michael Boltons. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline is where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. And we are available on all platforms. So we're going to go through the games from Sunday uh, in the NBA. There were eight of them. So we're going to talk about um, all of those, all of the action, what we need to do with it, what we need to um, consider for our fantasy teams. Hopefully you got the win here at the end of week two. So, Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Not much in the way of news that we were not, we're not going to cover anyway in the show, but in terms of other news for tomorrow, Joel Embiid has popped up on the injury report as questionable with an illness. So if he is out, then DeAnthony Melton's value does go up pretty significantly. Yeah, I wouldn't say that Harrell or Reed are going to be doing huge amounts given the way that Doc Rivers is deploying them currently. It's going to be Melton. It's going to be Niang probably. Um, a little bit of extra for PJ Tucker. And then more usage for Harden. Maxi in particular, and a little bit for the Thick Hogsman, Tobias Harris. We're not going to go through and you know, talk about you know, most added players and waiver wires or dropped players. I did a waiver wire show just a few hours ago, so you can go and check in over there. So we're going to get straight into the games from Sunday. The first one of those games was the Pelicans and the Clippers. The Pelicans, big winners in the early game of the day. 112-91. The big fella Zion Williamson returned only 31 minutes, but 21-12 and really importantly, seven assists and 75% shooting from the line. Really important to see those assists come in, the big rebounds, just a strong game all around. McCollum had 22 on 47%. He'd been struggling a little bit with his shooting and he had four threes here. While another low minute game from Jonas Valanciunas. Jonas Vassal Inuasas. Now, granted, yes, this was a blowout, but he played 24. McCullum played 32. Zion played 32. Two other starters played 39 and 37 in Najee Marshall and Trey Murphy. And the last four games for Jonas Valanciunas have been 22 minutes in a... Not a blowout. 22 minutes in also not a blowout. 31 minutes in like a 13-point vic- uh, loss. And then 24 minutes here. Larry Nance is taking his minutes... A lot. And it's worrying. I'm not dropping Valanciunas or anything like that, but some of his hot start stuff is, I think, going to unravel somewhat. We had some worries with it in the preseason. As for Najee Marshall, he backed up a career high last game with another big one. 17, 6, and 4, two steals and three threes. Now, when Brandon Ingram and Herbalife Jones returns, he's not going to have this opportunity. He's a solid enough player, but this has been really out of the blue. Uh, for him in these couple of games. So don't overreact. I'd say almost the same for Larry Nance, who had 15 and 9 in his 23 minutes. Strong numbers. Good streamer. 14 team league sort of a player. Devontae Graham had six assists with nine points. And uh, Trey Murphy, the shots just didn't go in here. He was still a plus 21. He still had 37 minutes. 15 and 5 with three threes on 38%. Now, the real test is going to be when Ingram and Jones return, what is he able to do? I think we want to hold until we get to that spot. Jose Alvarado was yuck. We had a lot of yuck shooting games today, like terrible ones. Zero of five for zero points. He had two assists. He's not remotely a 12-team league guy. He's a streamer for steals. And even if you did that today, that didn't work out particularly well. The Kawhi Leonard saga rolls on for the Clippers. He's out Sunday. He's going to be out Monday. I don't know what... There's obviously a problem. This is not standard management. This is a problem. So we hope that things go okay. Hmm. Johnny Wall, 21 minutes. He'll sit tomorrow in the back-to-back. Eight points, zero rebounds, six assists, and two blocks. So the six assists are good. The two blocks are good. He's still not a top 150 player. You are just holding him, hoping that he can get to 27 minutes a night. 
but I'm not really sure that that happens. People seem absolutely convinced that he is just going to take the starting spot and play 30 minutes a night over Reggie Jackson. I am not convinced. In fact, I think it's rather unlikely that he ever gets to 30 minutes. This Maybe I'm wrong on that. And I am in the minority for sure. And I have no problem if you want to hold John Wall. I wouldn't. I would drop him. And this look, this is okay. The six assists are good. The two blocks are good. But not much else there is exciting. The minutes are down for everyone, though. So that's a factor. Reggie Jackson had nine points in 27. He is only a stream guy, especially with Wall out tomorrow. And Storm and Norman had 18-3-3 three and three in 25. And Marcus Morris returned to post 12-8-4. Like Morris and Powell and Jackson, they're only 12-team league guys because there is a game on Monday. Um, massive buy low for Paul George. 28 minutes, 14, 3 and 3. He shot 26%. He's not even a top 50 player this season. Th- that will change. He will improve. I feel 100% confident in that. All right? He is sick. He's recovering from this illness. And he just isn't this bad. He is going to improve. So, we say this with Paul George all the time. People hate Paul George. They don't believe in Paul George ever. Buy low on Paul George. See if you can get him for a top 40 player. I'm really confident that he's going to be better than that for the rest of the season. But this was rough. The Ivic Zubats minutes, I just don't know what to do with them. 23 of them here. Four and six with two blocks. So at least he had the two blocks. And we still have to hold him. But consistency and predictability with his playing time. This is a game without Covington, without Leonard. And he still plays 23 minutes. So the backup center was out and he still doesn't play. But then he'll play 35 minutes in other games. It's really hard to predict. And this Clippers team... They're a disaster at the moment. There's no cohesion. There's no pattern. There's no rhyme or rhythm to anything they're doing. And I think part of it is the way that Lou runs his rotations. Now, Ty Lou, to me, is a, is a really good coach. He's also a guy that puts something out there often, and it's completely wrong. And he's usually smart enough to make the correct adjustments. Let's see if he's able to make some adjustments with these lineups and with some of his offensive systems and lineup combinations, because they've been bad so far. And just some consistency. I know he's in trouble in terms of consistency with players because what the hell is going on with Kawhi Leonard? But there needs to be more consistency than what we've seen so far um, from uh, old mate Ty Lue because it has been somewhat of a struggle. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all football and basketball betting for this upcoming season, whether you want to find out about news and injuries and player developments, Podcast, so in-depth analysis on every game, betonline.net will have everything you need. It's your continued source for all sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. It's also the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your other favorite games and events like the Major League Baseball World Series, the start of the NHL season, boxing, golf, and MMA. We've got Monday Night Football tomorrow. It's the Bengals and the Browns, and at betonline.net, you can see that the Bengals and Joe Burrow are three-point favorites with a total of 45. And all of the action for week, whatever it is, nine, I think it is in the NFL, that's all up there at betonline.net as well. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Don't forget to gamble responsibly. After listening to Locked On Fantasy Basketball, check out Locked On Sports today as well. Quick recap of all of the major news and all of the stories across the sports landscape. Let's go to the second game. The Wizards... They got smashed by the Celtics. 112-94 was the final score in this one. Um, So minutes were down across the board for a lot of these players, but he was pretty good, Chris Tapps. Not great, but pretty good. 17-13 and with two blocks on 50% shooting, and it was a real stinker from Beal. Another one of those guys who at one point, I think it was 0 of 11. He ended with 12-1-8. His assist numbers have been great this season. He had a steal and a block, but that's some rough shooting. They went with Dillon right out. They played Jordan Goodwin 18 minutes. Yes, that is a real players person. Six points, two assists, a steal and a block, while Kuzma, 9-9 nine and nine in 28 minutes on 23%. It's hard to read huge amounts into this game. Um, I'm yet to be convinced that Wes Unseld is a good coach. He played Denny Abdi just 11 minutes, no injury. Just didn't like the defense that he was seeing from him, apparently. 6-1-1 one one for Abdi. So they started Anthony Gill. Anthony Gill should not be a rotation NBA player. I don't understand what Unseld's doing. Now, Gill... Uh, look, to be fair to Gil, he was okay here, 10-5, and, and but I wouldn't add him, but the rotation's really weird. Since delon has gone down, they've been playing Denny fewer minutes. I thought it would be the exact opposite. And you want to talk about unpredictability, what about Fart and Will Barton? No, f- you, Will! No, he's ready to sack that. F- run, Will! Give it off quick! He played like 29 minutes the last two games. 14 minutes! Why? 
Four, two, and one. Now, I don't think Will Barton's particularly good. I'm sure you're all well aware of that. And he got cooked out there today. But your other options aren't great. Like eight Johnny Davis minutes. I eh, don't think so. Five Isaiah Todd minutes. Even Rui Hachimura, 13 and nine, was a, you know, it was okay. But the minutes are a mess on the bench. It's hard to... Yeah, Barton's not a 12-er. Avdi is not a 12-er. Anthony Gill isn't a 12-er, obviously. It's just Kyle, Chris Dapson, Bradley. What about Monty Morris, though? 27 minutes, three points. Seven rebounds, two assists. He's, he's been really bad, I think. I don't think he's excelled at all in this role. Um, is he a hold? Yeah, for now. But I'm losing quite a bit of faith in him. For the Celtics, Tatum was off to a really hot start, ended with 23 in 27 minutes, four rebounds and three assists, while Jalen Brown had 24 and 10 JB, you've done it again. And Brogo finally got a big game from Brogdon. 23 points in 23 minutes, 8 of 8 from the line. That's what's super impressive, that massive free throw attempt rate. He is like 120th this season, so he's totally fine to have at the back end of your roster. While Marcus Smart still struggling along, same with Al Horford. 5 and 8 for Horford in 24 minutes, while Smart had 7, 3 and 6 with two steals. I think both guys should be held on to, but yeah, there, there are some definite struggles here. Grant Williams, hmm. Another low-minute game for Grant, 25 of them. 10-3-3 three three with a block and two threes. He's still shooting really well. He's quite a good shooter. And he's almost, well, you know, he is a top 100 player this season. But the, it, that's on the back of some insane shooting numbers. And, and I'm not, re- he is now a 12-team league guy, don't get me wrong, a back-end player. I'm not certain that that's going to stick. And I don't really think there's much need to have Derek White on a roster in 12-team leagues. Maximum Derek. 5-5-2 five, five, and two in 24 minutes for White. Uh, he said that really one big game, and then, yeah, not too much really happening after that. The third game of the day, the Pistons get the upset victory over the Warriors. 128-114, the final score here. This was a Clay Thompson rest game. So Jordan Poole started. He played 36 minutes. He had 30 points with five triples and two steals. That's two big games in a row for Poole, who had started this season off pretty shakily. Um, we hope that yeah, he's going to be able to maintain minutes. The part of the, the problem was, was he just wasn't getting 30 a night. And he got it here without Clay, but he also got it the game before with Clay, and that's important. Steph had a trip to the uh, locker room with a neck issue. He ended with 32, 6, and 3. He's been unbelievable to start this season, even though the shooting was a bit off here. And Draymond had 7, 7, and 7. Um, Wiggins, remember that hot start? Yeah. Sal High, hope you cashed in. 10 and 3 with a triple one on 27% shooting. He is going to be significantly worse than what he was in that first week of the season. That's not you know, rocket science to suggest that. He's also better than this game showed, though. James Wiseman, 6-4 and four in 13 minutes. I'm sorry. He needs to be jacked all the way off. Get that garbage out of here! Did you know that James Wiseman's rostered in more leagues than Cali Olenek? Can everybody pull their fingers out of their asses and do something about that? What are we actually doing with Wiseman? Why are we holding on to him? Oh, you know, there's the potential, Josh. At some point, the Warriors, they need to make him their starting center. Do they want to lose? I I do not understand the fascination with holding on to this bloke. I I could... This could look so stupid. Clip it. Play it later on. It's... It could look completely stupid when he is playing 30 minutes a night and averaging 20 and 9 with two blocks and I look so dumb. But he looks useless out there. And the minutes aren't there. He is costing them whenever he's on the court, really, most of the time. And I don't know. I just don't see the point of it. Kaminga struggled again. He's worse than Wiseman. Um, and Moody, yeah, Moody plays well. I like Moody when he's ever he's out there, but there's just not enough upside in terms of playing time to do much with him in fantasy, unfortunately. For the Pistons, Cadus Cunningham. My name is Richie Cunningham. Yeah, there were some insane comments about him and him being bad and not worth a number one overall pick and you know Anthony Bennett and whatever crap you want to throw out there. Yeah, he's actually really good. 23, 10, and 9, um, establishing himself really well. And this was also a good game from the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay. 28, 6, and 3 with four threes. The problem with Bay is we don't know if we're going to get 17 shots or we're going to get four shots. He's all over the place with role and usage and production. But this was good. It was also a good game from the Flamin' Galar, Alf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of Flamin' Galars. Career best game probably for Stewart. 
24 and 13 with two threes. Now, no assists, no steals, no blocks hurts, but this does at least bump him inside the top 150 for the first time this season. Right about to the right area as a back-end 12-team league player. Jalen Duran hurt his ankle in this one. He wasn't able to return, and I highly doubt he's going to play on Monday, meaning Nerlens Noel will probably get that rotation spot. It is really, again, hard for me to say see Casey playing during 27 a night as much as I think he should. It does not matter what I think. So if you wanted to drop him, I get it. Jaden Ivey, some will have some thoughts to drop Ivey, and he is cooling off. Okay, that's expected. But 15, 4, and 3 is steal on a block, two threes. You don't drop him. You hold him for sure. I'm no interest there. While Boyan Bogdanovic, um, he's not getting traded because he signed an extension. 21, 3, and 3, 35 minutes, and again, insane shooting. Didn't miss a two and hit 50% from three. This is one of the biggest sell highs ever that you're probably not going to have any chance of executing. No one is going to buy it, and if they do, then they're dumb. Sorry, if you accept Boyan Bogdanovic for a top 50 player, you're dumb. It's just not going to continue. Nobody is a 50-plus percent three-point shooter. It's going to fall away. But in general, just enjoy the ride if you've got him. Try and trade him, sure. But just enjoy the ride. Isaiah Livers, just the six points in 17 minutes for him. Next game, the Knicks and the Cavs. The Cavs win this one, 121-108. What I found really interesting is that Mitchell Robinson played just 21 minutes. Nothing to do with foul trouble due to the fact that his backup is better. But of course, old mate Tom Thibodeau decided to put all the starters back in to end the game and cost himself a win. Four and seven for Robinson in 21 minutes, and this is not great, but he'd been playing good minutes most games. But it is interesting that it's not injury, it's not foul trouble. They just went, Hartenstein's better for some of the game. But then, yeah, that, that hope's deflated when Robinson comes in to close. Hartenstein, 27 minutes, 12 and nine, a steal and a block. He should play 27 a night, but he will not. Hold him for now. The burner, Jalen Brunson, 16, four and seven with three steals. Man, getting three steals out of Brunson, like, it's like finding hen's teeth. Now, these are great things. You don't get them from him often. He's just being really, really solid. While Rowan Barrett had 15 and 5, yeah, shot 60%. So he's getting better. Julius Randle did not get better, I would say. Um, the double royal had 15, 9, and 7, which, again, on the surface is okay. But 39 from the field, 50, 5 of 10 from the line is disastrous. And then two steals. He's the 98th ranked player this season. While Fournier played 28 minutes, 16 points, three threes. I really wonder what happens when Grimes comes back because Fournier doesn't get minutes like the rest of the starters. But is Thibodeau going to mess it up? Almost. I mean, will he mess it up in terms of what makes sense? Yes. Will he mess up his current starting five and, and change them? Almost definitely not. And that's what puts the, the issue there. Quickly struggled seven points on seven shots while um, Obert Toppin had nine and four in 15 minutes. He played pretty well, I thought, Obi. I don't want to hear any more about Obi-Wan. For the Cavs, you want to talk about obvious sell highs? He's gone. He's good. 38, 3, and 12 with a steal and two blocks for Don Mitchell. He is the fifth-ranked player this season. Now, when we talk sell high, can Don Mitchell, best case, can he be a top 20 player? Probably. I find it highly unlikely. So if you're selling high, you're selling it for a top 15, top 13 sort of player. But remember, he is doing all this stuff with high usage, high assist rate, because Garland is out very much the same as the way Garland was able to do the almost the exact same thing last season when Sexton and Rubio are out and he was the only guard there. So when Garland returns, Mitchell is going to cop a hit. So, to some degree, he's going to cop a hit. Remember Karis Levert's 41-point game? Well, he at least scored 42 combined in two games because he had one point on 0 of 9 shooting. At least he hit his only free throw, but that is that is every single game as a turd, and then one absolute huge one. The benefit that he's getting, at least, is assists. Eight assists here, but again, when Garland returns, when is Levert going to have these assist opportunities, or at least to this level? Probably won't, would be my guess. I reckon he's going to become a drop. You can hold for now until um, what's his name? Garland returns. Kevin Love went crazy, 29 points, eight threes, 22 minutes. He's a streamer, not a must roster in my mind. Well, Wade was good too, 22, four and three, and six triples. Evan Mobley, like mid. Like, it's just mid, isn't it? 16 and 7, a steal and a block. 53rd ranked player. Like, he hit his free throw, so that's good. But there hasn't really been a significant step forward. Maybe it's the ankle, but maybe it's just the players around him. Jarrett Allen had a, a tough one, 6 and 13 in 26 minutes for that one. While well, the Discman, CD Osman, I reckon we can uh, get him out of there. 
Yes, sir. For what feels like the millionth time already this season, the Spurs took on the Wolves. It feels like the millionth time because it's actually the third time these two teams have played each other. And I think it's the second time the Spurs have won. 107-98. Towns had 26-11 and four steal and two blocks. Really good numbers from Towns as he pushes his way back towards the second round, 26 for the season. That is about the area I think he's going to be. And you want to, again, we talked about it a lot so far already today. Why couldn't anyone shoot? Now, Goose eventually rescued his line, Anthony Edwards. He had 18, 2, and 6 with two steals and a block, but 39% shooting. I think he missed his first 9 or his first 11. It was bad. He rescued it a bit. Jaden McDaniels, 7 points. Jaden McDaniels' offensive output is wild. Now, he's never going to get big, big rebound games continually, but the offensive stuff's all over the place. But he is really helping himself and helping you with insane defensive numbers. Three steals and a block here for McDaniels. While Gobert had 9 and 12 with two blocks, and this was an absolute stinker from D'Angelo Russell. 10, 5, and 4 on 29%. Why was he taking so many shots when he couldn't get him to fall? This team is so discombobulated and so ill-fitting at the moment that I'm not really sure what fixes it. Also, with Kyle Anderson back, Jalen Noel played 10 minutes. This guy was, remember how good he was? Uh, Maybe not anymore. Two points, nothing else, 13% shooting. I don't think you need to bother holding him in 12-team leagues. He was an interesting flyer, an interesting short-termer, but we saw the minutes spike when Anderson went down. Anderson returned, albeit only playing 13 minutes, but he returned, and Noel was barely seen from. I thought it was bad coaching in this game from Finch as well. Um, For the Spurs, the old horsecock, Keldon Johnson. Whose horse is that? 25, 6, and 8 with five threes. He's been amazing to start this season. Really impressive. And Yaka Pertle is starting to fire up. Only four points for Big Yak, but 14 boards, four assists, two steals, three blocks. The blocks are coming. And Doug McDermott played 25 minutes for 23 points and seven triples. Now, I know who Doug McDermott is. He's a guy that I can rely upon for threes, and his minutes are up because Vassal, Richardson, Sohan, Roby were all out here. And then they lost Blake Wesley in this game with a knee injury. Hopefully that's not too serious. McDermott is not going to be reliable enough to add in 12-team formats. Cater Bates-Diop was solid in his spot start, 18-6, and six, while Trey Jones sucked. 10 points on 17%. Malachi Branham, almost the same, 14%. But at least Jones brought the eight assists. Do not overreact to this. Do not drop Trey Jones. He's a top 100 player for the season with more minutes upside because Joshua Primo is not on the team anymore. Zachy Collins played 23, while Langford had 34 minutes. Don't know why. I do know why. A lot of players are out. Seven and seven, two steals and a block. I just, yeah, I just don't think he's really very good at all. And he is not going to be getting anywhere close to this level of playing time um, when a lot of these players or even some of these players return to action, which I don't think will be too far away. The next game is the Mavericks beating the Magic 114-105. The Palo Banquero 20-point game streak ended on a really rough shooting performance. We saw Paolo be able to really yeah, kill it early with big field goals, massive free throw percentage compared to where he was at Duke, and big defensive stats. Well, 18-3-4, and four, zero steals, zero blocks, 30 from the field and 63 from the line hurts a lot. I won't say that he's going to be like this every game because he won't be, but there was always a level of regression coming for Paolo. Bol Bol, though, maybe he's never going to regress. I think he will. 30 minutes, 16-11 and 11 with three blocks. He's been great. He's a must-roster player. What happens when Anthony, Suggs, Fultz, Gary Harris return? I have no idea. He's probably still got like a 20-minute roll coming off the bench. But he's been great. Wendell Carter had 15, 9, and 4. Solid enough numbers there. While Bumba, yes, as I thought, those numbers that he put up last game, which all came in garbage time, were unrealistic. So you don't need to have Mo Bumba on your roster. Get that garbage out of here! You also don't need Terrence Ross. He had eight points in 25, while Franz Wagner struggled for 11 points with two rebounds and four assists. Just hot. buy low for Franz. He's struggling a little bit, but the shooting numbers are going to come up. RJ Hampton. Now, I've shit on this guy a lot, not fi- lot literally, figuratively, but he played decently. Actually, he played well, especially in the fourth quarter. 15-4 with three threes, two steals in 21 minutes for Hampton. I'm not rushing to add him at all. Maybe in 16-team leagues or 18-team leagues. But that's really about it. Kevon Harris, who also was a DNP last game, played 17 minutes for 12 points. He's a, I added him on my 30 deep league. I don't know that I'll use him too much, but I did add him. For the Mavericks, um, Luka Doncic. Oh, stunning. Yeah. Yeah. 
44 points, including 30 in the first half, five assists and a steal. Unfortunately, he torpedoed your free throws, which I can't say we weren't expecting at some point, but it happened, unfortunately, 57% on 8 of 14 shooting. Well, Dorian Finney-Smith, finally a good game. 13 and 8 in 29 minutes, 2 steals, 3 threes. I'm not rushing to add him. He's a perfect stream guy, which was perfect for week 2. Unfortunately, he had 3 out of the 4 terrible games. But he's not someone I'm holding on to under every circumstance. Dinwiddie just continues to show that he is not that good. He's not bad, but he's not that good. 12, 4, and 5 with 3 steals. The 3 steals are anomalous as well. While Christian Wood... Um, I don't think Jason Kidd particularly likes Christian Wood's style of play and his um, pretty poor defensive efforts. 24 minutes, 5 and 10, no defensive stats. What he was doing those first couple of games of the season was un- was had no chance of sticking. And now he's back to the 120th best player. You don't drop him, but it's not going particularly well. Nor, nor is it for JaVale Javel- McGee, who they gave a three-year contract to as a 36-year-old bad player. <laughs> Zero points in nine minutes, and Dwight Powell is his way into the rotation. Is Powell going to take over? I don't know. Five points in 12 minutes with four rebounds. Powell just does little things. He's not going to be a fantasy option, of course, but he's going to have an impact here somehow. While Reggie Bullock cannot get anything going. 29 minutes, six points with two threes. Timmy Hardaway did, though, 21 in 27, but his minutes and production have been like all over the place. Like It's hard to get a track of what his playing time and his production is going to look like as we move forward. All right. The next game is the Suns. They beat the Rockets 129-104. No, try again. 124-109. That's the correct score. Phoenix wins. But the delicate dancer, Alperen Sengun. It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. 29 minutes, 16 points, 9 rebounds, 60% shooting, hit all his free throws. Remember Silas was starting Bruno Fernando? Uh, We're not sure he's going to fit with the starting group. Just play your best players, dickhead. Like, why is it so hard? Shingun is back starting. He's fine with these guys. They're going to make it work. They've got to make it work with him in there. I think that mini crisis, not quite as ridiculous as the Casey Ocpala thing in uh, Sacramento, but still pretty dumb. I reckon that might have been averted. Cousin Kevin Porter Jr. continues unabated, 26-8-6. It wasn't the best percentage night, 42 from the field, and he went 11-14 of 14 from the line, which... <clears throat> Is 79%, so it's okay, but it might actually hurt you if your team was traveling at 81%. That's a big volume to drop down. The wild thing, Jay Sean Tate. Even the wild thing's gone well. I can't do much about that. He played 30 minutes on the nose with Eric Gordon out. 9, 5, and 3. He is rostered in leagues. I don't know why. He, Apart from streaming today, he is not a 12-team league player. While unfortunately, Tari preseason, I don't think we need to do that anymore. 11 minutes, 9, 2, and 1. Yes, he did have foul trouble, but when you are behind Gordon, Tate, Smith, Martin, a lot needs to happen. And yes, you can stash in a roto league, in a weekly changes league, in a league where your team is so dominant that you can hold on to a guy that might become top 100 in March. He literally might not ever get there this season. As much as we might like him, as much as we saw good stuff in the preseason, we're not seeing it. I don't know when it's going to change. I think Jabari Smith... Despite his struggles, he was a massive buy low. Eight and seven with two threes on 25% shooting. He is not playing particularly well. Rookies do struggle often early, and he is struggling. He's had a couple of big games, but it's not great for him at the moment. While another guy that is struggling is Jalen Green, Filipino legend. 15, one and two in 31 minutes. Unlike, say, a player like Jabari Smith, who might shoot poorly, but can do things with rebounds and steals and blocks, Green can't. He's not really good at those other things. So when he has 15 points and only one rebound and two assists because he shot 28%, it's a rough night. He's now outside the top 120 for this season. I think, yeah, obviously we're not dropping him. He had a few really strong moments to start the season, but he has tailed off quite considerably. And I think he is uh, an absolute buy low. KJ Martin, eight points in 24 minutes. Yeah, cool. Don't care. Eight points for Gary Bird. Eight points in 16 minutes with two threes for Matthews there. For the uh, Phoenix Suns, they did start Bismack Biombo because I guess the guy that's been playing all of those backup minutes, why wouldn't you elevate him into a larger role? They kept Landale on the bench. Biombo, five and five, but five blocks in 22 minutes. He had early fouls, three first half fouls, none in the second half. Um, Biombo's fine if you want some boards and blocks. Landale's probably the preference. 16 and seven in 23 minutes, a steal and a block. Just give him 28. Let's see what he can do. Nah, but you got to keep him. you got to keep the bench guys together. Um, Cam Johnson played 31 minutes, 19 and 7 with five triples. He's not quite there, but he's getting there. 
And he is a must-roster 12-team league player, while Booker had 30 points with six assists on 58% shooting. Uh, Chrissy Paul, another low usage night, 10 points with 15 assists. And Mikhail Bridges, 15 and 5. A little bit of a down night for Bridges after a big game last time out. Both of those guys around 13% usage. And that's hard. That, that's hard to get enough value on those sort of nights. They will obviously have better performances. And this in 15 and 5 from Bridges is nothing to sneeze at, um, especially on 71% shooting. But the volume is so low that it, it does impact. Um, the overall output that he has there. Not much else, I don't think so, to talk about from a uh, from a Suns perspective in this game. Let's go last game of the night. And they did it. The final winless team in the NBA, the Lakers, have got their first victory. They get it over the Nuggets, 121-110. Big Chungus had 23-14-6 with two blocks. That's Nikola Jokic. He was great across the board. And they also had Contavious Caldwell-Pope. Return to the lineup. 33 minutes for KCP. Nine points, all threes. Five rebounds, five assists, one steal, two blocks. Good numbers. Like he is putting up 12-team value at the moment. I don't I don't fully believe in him as a 12-team must roster. But at the moment, the numbers are there. A lot of panic on Jamal Murray. 32 minutes, 21, 4, and 5. This is why you don't panic. It's going to happen. Right, we're 10 days into the season. Didn't take that long. But people act like it's their whole life that Jamal Murray has been sucking. Things were going to turn around. For him, it was pretty obvious. So I reckon the buy low windows probably slammed shut here. Not not to say he didn't suck because he was bad, but he was great here. Maga Porter Jr. had 17 and 9. While Aaron Gordon, man, this guy, I can't predict what this guy's going to do. 18 and 6 with three threes and two blocks. He's all over the shop with his numbers. He probably is a 12 team league guy, but man, I wouldn't want to rely upon it on a game by game basis. Only 13 minutes for Christian Brown. That's interesting. While Bruce Brown had 28 minutes after the big stiffy Bones Highland was a late scratch. He was available and then apparently hurt himself in pregame warm-ups and didn't play. 28 minutes for Brown. Christian, not no, Bruce, sorry. 10 points, four assists with two threes for Brown, who remains like a good 14-team league guy and a fringe 12-teamer. For the Lakers, they did, in fact, bring Russell Westbrook off the bench yet again. Praise the brick going up. And if I'm going to shit on Westbrook, I'm going to praise him when he played well. And he played well. 18, 8, and 8. He was efficient. He didn't take stupid shots. He was a team best plus 18. I thought he was really pretty good. That is super encouraging for where his value is. Now, of course, he's not even a top 200 player this season, but that's getting on the right track. Anthony Davis through the back injury, 37 minutes. You hope he's okay. 23-15, a steal and a block, while LeBron had 26-6-8. and eight. Good numbers for those guys. And it was a good game from Lonnie Walker, who had struggled a little bit. Had fallen outside the top 150, but had 18-5 and five with a steal and two blocks. Still not particularly efficient, and you don't rely upon those defensive stats from Lonnie. But he is you know, solid enough to be on a 12-team roster. He's also not good enough to be a stunner if he's on the waiver wire. But good stuff from Lonnie Walker here. Hello. I think Pat Beverly's done. Get that garbage out of here! 5-5 five and five in 21 minutes, while Troy Brown started and had 8-6, and six, and Austin Reeves had 10-4. and four with two threes, a steal, and a block. They can both just be stream options, Brown and Reeves, but it's probably more for just 14 team leagues. Well, Kendrick Nunn, holy shit. Three minutes, he is so far out of favor, it's not funny. Obviously, no one is rostering Kendrick Nunn. Hopefully, you're not anyway, in most formats. That will bring us to the lines of the night. The monstrous line of the night does go to the Don. Donovan Mitchell. The waiver wire line of the night is his teammate, Dean Wadey Wade, who is... Solid enough to be a 14-team league guy for now. The young gun of the night is Cade Cunningham. And your dart of the night is Jalen Noel, who was putrid. Top 10 players in category leagues for today. Number one, Don Mitchell. Then Keldon Johnson, Kevin Love, Nikola Jokic, Jakob Pertl, Jordan Poole, Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bay, Bol Bol, and Isaiah Stewart. Your top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Dean Wade, Najee Marshall. Marshall's a streamer. I streamed him in today in a 12-team league with... Jones and Ingram out. That's about it. Larry Nance is like a 14-teamer. Doug McDirt is a good streamer for threes. Um, Jock Landau, I don't mind for 12s this week. Finney Smith is a streamer. RJ Hampton's a deep league guy. Campaign is an assist streamer. Sam Howes is a deep league guy. And Tim Hardaway's got some fringe 12-team league value. Your top 10 players in points leagues. We go to Don Mitchell, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, Carl Anthony Towns, Stephen Curry, Anthony Davis, Big Zion Williamson, Cade Cunningham, Kevin Porter Jr. And... LeBronald James. And that, guys, will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. And if you're on YouTube, you know what to do. On one of those thumbs, please give me a thumb. Just shove it right in. There you go. Big thumber right up the middle. 
Subscribe as well. Hit the bell. All those things help immensely. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.